Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our presentation on the College Credit Plus program, which is Ohio's dual enrollment program. My name is Andrea Bennett, and I am from Columbus State Community College, and we are so excited that you uh, joined us here tonight. Um, looks like some more people are joining, so um, we'll give them a few seconds, but uh, I do want to let everyone know that today we have presenters from several Central Ohio colleges and universities, as well as several local school districts. And we'll be describing the CCP program, its benefits and risks, and how your child can get involved. This presentation should be the start of a family conversation to help you decide if CCP is the right program for your child, if this is the right time to get started, and what option is the right fit. We do have a question answer box available during our presentation today, so please feel free to send us your questions and one of our panelists will provide you with an answer. You can access this chat box by clicking on more in your Zoom menu and then choosing Q&A. So let's go ahead and get started. What is College Credit Plus? College Credit Plus is the State of Ohio's dual enrollment program. Students are enrolled in college classes and receive both high school and college credit for these classes. That means that the student can be earning credit for both high school graduation and to meet college degree requirements. So it's pretty cool. The other great thing to know about CCP is that it is free for families to participate. I'll say that again. It is free for families to participate. It's free college credit. The costs of the program are covered by the local school district for public school students or by the state of Ohio for students who attend a non-public school or are homeschooled. It's important to note that there are some qualifications that students must meet to receive this funding though. CCP covers most of the costs of participation for families. The school district will pay for the tuition and books for students. Colleges will waive all fees, such as application fees, lab fees, et cetera. So as long as a student is eligible and a course is eligible, the, the um, tuition and fees should be covered and the um, course should be free to families and free to the students. There are a few fees that families may still be expected to cover, however. If a student enrolls in more classes than the state is going to cover, and we'll explain what that means in a few minutes, then the family will be responsible to cover the full costs for those additional courses. CCP also does not cover the cost of transportation or parking for students who take classes on a college campus. And there may be additional optional fees for things such as a recreation center or other activities that a student might opt into. So it's important to know that some fees um, for optional things are not going to be covered by CCP. Now I'm going to turn the presentation over to my colleague from Franklin University. Uh, hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Maureen Cooper and I am with Franklin University. Uh, let's go ahead and focus on CCP students. The state has a set number of requirements for students who want to participate in the CCP program. To be eligible, a student must be an Ohio resident in grades 7 through 12, and meet the statewide college readiness guidelines. We do need to stress that students who enroll in College Credit Plus courses are taking actual college courses. These courses may contain topics or themes that are considered adult in nature. We do not ask our faculty and instructors to adjust the material for younger students. And it is hard to know which classes may have this content. An English class may ask students to read books that contain controversial subjects. A language class may discuss cultural issues that are adult. Or a psychology class may talk about abnormal behavior. The books and other required materials may, may include adult content. Students may be participating in discussions either online or in person that touch on mature themes. The state also requires us to provide this legal disclaimer. The subject matter of a course enrolled in under the College Credit Plus program may include mature subject matters or materials, including those of a graphic, explicit, violent, or sexual nature, 
that will not be modified based upon College Credit Plus enrollee participation, regardless of where course instruction occurs. You will be required to submit a permission slip signed by student and a parent or guardian, acknowledging that you accept this information before you can be admitted into a CCP program. The student will also be required to submit a survey stating that they possess the necessary social and emotional maturity for college classes before enrolling in a CCP class. We recommend that you have a family discussion to decide if CCP is right for you and your family. CCP is a great program for the right student, and we hope this presentation will help you to decide if it is the right program, the right time, and the right college or colleges. Students who do best in CCP are students who are looking for a challenge, who are academically ready to be successful in a college class. Beyond academics, students will also need to possess the social and emotional skills needed for college success. Let's discuss the options for CCP. Students can enroll in CCP courses through many different institutions around the state. All public colleges, two-year and four-year, participate in CCP, along with a number of private colleges. In Central Ohio, your public options include Columbus State, COTC and the Ohio State, while Franklin, Kenyon, and Otterbein are your private college options. Students are able to take these classes in a variety of locations. Some courses will be offered in your high school, while others will be taught on the college campus. We've also seen a large increase in the number of online courses that are available to students. Now you will hear from the representative from Kenyon. Hello, my name is Dudley Thomas. I'm from Kenyon College. Now that you've heard about the options, let's discuss why a student may choose to participate in the CCP program. The top benefit of participating in CCP is free college credit. I won't repeat that. As you know, college costs have increased over the years and CCP can help a student earn credit that can meet their degree requirements. Students may enroll in, in the college where they intend to complete a college degree, or they may choose to transfer credit between institutions. Credit transfers between all public universities in the state and may also transfer to out of state and or private colleges as well. Another great benefit of participating in CCP is to gain experience. CCP allows students to explore college, work with faculty and staff, and take a wide range of classes. S students can start taking introductory courses in new academic programs, consider possible career choices, or take classes in a variety of disciplines. This will give students the opportunity to learn expectations of the college classroom. One benefit of CCC is the ability to complete college at a faster pace. In the years since CCP was introduced, there have been many students who have actually completed certificate programs or associate degrees while still in high school. Of course, this is dependent on the student's interest and the degree path. While some students may be able to graduate early, others may use this as an opportunity to broaden their college experience. Some students may be able to complete a double major or add minors to their program. Students also may be able to take fewer courses each semester and give themselves time for experiences such as co-ops, internships, undergraduate research, study abroad, and other ways to prepare for their future career. Well, there are many benefits to CCP, there are also some risks. We wanna make sure that you go into this program with full understanding. Poor academic performance can have a very negative consequences for students. The expectation is that students should be able to earn a college GPA of at least 2.0 Falling below this level can result in financial issues. CCP law states that if a student fails a class or drops after the initial drop deadline, their school can ask them to repay all costs for the course. It's important 
to make sure your child is ready to pass a college level class, or you may end up paying for a free class. Beyond the finances, the grades earned will also be on the student's high school and college transcript. This means that poor performance will impact future admissions and scholarship opportunities. Again, this can have long-term effects. Since the classes are on the college transcript, it can also cause difficulties in admission to medical or graduate school. To make sure students don't do too much damage to their future, CCP students who do poorly may be placed on CCP probation or dismissal. Your school counselor will monitor grades and work with students through this process. CCP classes are real college classes, no matter if they're taught at the high school or on a college campus. CCP instructors will not modify the content of a CCP course for, for high school students taking this class. If they are in the class, they will be expected to meet the same requirements as all other students taking the class. It is possible that the instructor will presume that students have, have prior knowledge from high school classes. Here's an example. A student was enrolled in a college botany class before she took high school chemistry. The botany course assumed that the student all, had already taken chemistry and the student had great difficulty understanding the chemical process of photosynthesis. Even though she was smart, she ended up with a D in the class because she didn't have the high school knowledge the professor expected. Now you will hear from my colleague from Otterbein. Hi there, I am Lori Wilhelm and I'm an admission counselor at Otterbein University. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about things you should consider. Um, as part of your family conversation, we have a few items that we think you should consider um, whether or not your child will be successful. First, think about your child's maturity level. Remember, there may be adult content in the class. Is your child ready for those conversations? Um, they may also be taking classes with students who are significantly older than they are. How will your child react to a study partner in their 20s? Students need to have a strong time management um, ability to do well in college classes. The pace of the class will be much faster High school courses are year-long classes going over materials in 30 weeks. A college class is completed in a semester, which is 15 weeks. There's no time to procrastinate in college classes. Students need to be ready to work on the class from the very beginning. Students will be expected to do much more reading than regular high school classes and will be expected to come to class ready to discuss the readings. It's common for professors to tell students that for every hour of class, they will need to do two hours of work outside the classroom. Students who take classes on a college campus will also need to add time to their schedule to get to campus and park on top of the time needed to complete the coursework. You'll also want to pay attention to calendar differences between high school and college. The term may have different start and end dates as well as different spring breaks. And most colleges have no calamity days for snow. How well can your student advocate for their own best interests? Parents will not have the same access to grades and homework in a college classroom. Students will need to be able to initiate contact with faculty on their own. There's some important differences in law that will impact students in the CCP program. The Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, known as FERPA, is different between the K-12 and higher education systems. For the K-12 system, parents and students have equal rights to the student's educational records. That means that a parent can call a teacher and be given information about the student's performance. That changes at the college level, however. At the college level, only the student has access to the educational record, regardless of their age. 
That means that faculty members will not discuss student performance. It will be up to the student to reach out to the instructor to ask questions about homework or grades. Another important difference in law affects students with disabilities. At the K-12 level, schools follow IDEA, IDEA. A family will have an IEP conference with the teacher, parent, student, and counselor that are designed for student success. Colleges are governed by the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA. Students can receive accommodations and students need to initiate the process. These accommodations are designed for student access. Now that you've heard about the CCP, <laughs> CCP program, it's time to tell you how to participate. There are several steps that you need to take to participate in CCP. The state of Ohio has set eligibility criteria that will allow students to participate in the program. However, admission to specific colleges will depend on that college's admission criteria. Students will need to be admitted to the college of their choice. The admissions process will be very similar to applying to college after high school. So you'll need to work directly with each college to learn their admission requirements. The statewide college readiness test scores are one way to meet CCP student eligibility guidelines. You can view this chart to see if your test scores meet the standard. Students can also become eligible by meeting the test optional admission criteria. Students who have earned a 3.0 unweighted high school grade point average will be eligible for CCP. Students without the 3.0 may be eligible and should reach out to the college of their choice for more information. And now I'll go ahead and turn the presentation over to Ohio State. Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Brown from The Ohio State University. After you've been admitted to a college for College Credit Plus, you'll be able to enroll in classes. Let's discuss some of the rules for enrolling. While you can take a wide range of classes through College Credit Plus, there are a few rules on course eligibility. When you first start in the CCP program, you will need to take level one courses. These are introductory courses that apply to many college degree programs and will transfer easily between different colleges. Every college will list their level one courses that are available on their campus on their website. Of course, besides having courses that are eligible, there also are courses that are not eligible for CCP funding. These include courses such as phys ed, uh, study abroad, or individual lessons. If you choose to take one of these classes, your family will be responsible for all the costs. While CCP is free, there are some limits. You can earn up to 30 college credits in an academic year, and that is uh, summer, fall, and spring terms. You will also be limited to a lifetime maximum of 120 college credits between seventh and 12th grade. Many students will take a combination of high school and college classes. So there is a formula to determine how many college and high school classes you can take. A college class can range from three to five credit hours. And a year long high school course is worth three college credit hours. You'll count both types of classes in the amount of coursework you can take each year. So let's look at an example. Emma is taking five high school courses. Since a high school course is worth three college credits, we'll multiply that number by three. So five classes times three credits equals 15 credit hours. Emma has 30 hours available for the entire year. So we take out the 15 hours she's doing in high school 
And now we see that she can take a total of 15 credits during that academic year. And again, that's going to start with the summer term and follow with this uh, fall and spring terms. So we've given you a lot of information about the program. Let's talk about your next steps. It's very important that you work with your school to get the process started. You should set up an appointment with your counselor to learn about your options. You'll wanna discuss how CCP classes count towards high school graduation, also towards athletic eligibility if you're on a team. And most importantly, you will need to complete the CCP letter of intent by April 1st. We recommend that you complete the letter of intent, even if you're not 100% sure you're going to do CCP next year. When you submit the letter of intent, you're keeping your options open. It's not a commitment that you have to participate. You will also need to work with your college of interest. Don't forget to apply for admission to their CCP program. Every college that participates will have information on their website on how to apply, what information you need to submit, and their deadlines to apply. Be sure to note those deadlines as this tends to be very strict at the college level. You'll also need to check into the testing requirements for your college choice. You may need to supply an ACT or an SAT or possibly the Accuplacer or Alex test. And there might be limits on when you can take these or where you might take these tests. Again, those deadlines can be really important. So make sure you know when the testing needs to be completed for the college you want to go to. And of course, there will still be those test optional opportunities for admission, and it, you will need to check with each college that you're interested in to find out what those admission requirements are going to be. Every college will have an orientation and an advising process for students who are admitted to their CCP program. For some colleges, this might occur in the spring for the following school year, while other colleges might not schedule your fall classes until late summer. That's why it's really important that you keep in touch with both your high school and the CCP folks to make sure that you have everything well organized and working together. Now that we've given you the general information about CCP, we do wanna give you some information specific to the local colleges. So I'm going to start off by asking our representative from Columbus State to come back. Hello, everyone. Um, so we've given you a lot of great information about College Credit Plus. I'm gonna talk about some benefits of College Credit Plus at Columbus State and talk about the enrollment process that we have for students. Um, so Columbus State Community College has one of the largest CCP populations in the state. CCP students actually make up a quarter of our total student population. Uh, we offer over 200 degree and certificate programs, so our CCP students have tons of course options. Our students have access to multiple in-person and online resources to support their success, and they also have dedicated advisors to assist with academic planning and support. We offer our courses in person, online, live online, and in blended formats to accommodate different learning preferences. We have transfer agreements with over 40 colleges and universities across Ohio and beyond to ensure that there's a seamless transition when continuing college after high school. And we also offer scholarships to eligible CCP students who continue their studies at Columbus State after graduation. So there are a lot of benefits to CCP at Columbus State. Uh, if you'd like to get involved, the first step is, uh, to get involved in our program is to complete the CCP application, which is gonna be available on our website. We do not have an application deadline, but we recommend students apply at least two weeks before the start of their desired semester that makes sure we can get all the ducks in a row um, and get the student registered in time for the semester to start. Students will need to submit the online application. They'll need to submit a copy of their transcript or their ACT SAT score report and submit the permission slip and student questionnaire forms to be eligible to register for courses. 
Students who don't have a high school transcript or don't have ACT, SAT scores will need to complete a placement test. And we do offer those on both our Columbus and Delaware campuses. Students must submit a registration form signed by the parent or guardian and the school counselor to register for online or on-campus courses. And we do offer some embedded courses in the high school. And we would ask you to speak to your school counselor to see if that's an option in your high school. Um, once students are registered for an online or on-campus course, the students will receive a com confirmation email with next steps that will help them prepare for the start of the semester. And at Columbus State, registration for summer 2023 opens February 20th, and registration for autumn 2023 opens on April 17th. Um, so plenty of time to figure out you know, if Columbus State is the right college for you. We hope it is. Um, but if you want some more information about our program, you can visit our website, cscc.edu slash ccp, and you can definitely connect with me, um, and I'll be answering some, some of the Q&A questions that come through specifically for Columbus State. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. And now I'll turn it over to, I think, Franklin University is next. Thanks, this is uh, Maureen again with Franklin University, and I'll just share a few benefits about taking CCP through Franklin. Um, if you're not uh, super familiar with Franklin University, we are a primarily online institution. We do have some face-to-face -face CCP courses that would be available on campus, uh, but the majority of our courses are available online. Um, all of our degree programs are available to be completed online. So that leaves students with a wide variety of courses that they can take online um, from general education courses, uh, career pathway courses, as well as we do have some students that um, even work towards earning an associates. And we've even had a few uh, bachelor's degrees earned through CCP. Um, so there are a lot of online options um, for students through Franklin. Uh, just to kind of go through the steps, uh, st if students are interested, they'll want to go ahead and submit their application online. Um, and I will note, um, you will want to make sure that you select that you are a CCP student, even if you are thinking about um, potentially earning a degree. Um, the next will be transcripts. We'll take a look at those um, that will be sent from your high school counselor and determine if placement testing is needed. Um, if placement testing is needed, we do have a testing center at our campus uh, in downtown Columbus, but we also offer our AccuPlacer to be taken completely remotely um, so that students don't actually, if you know, transportation is an issue, they can actually do go ahead and take that online. Um, you know, as the state has required, uh, students will be taking a permission slip, uh, will be required with the application, and then we'll need to also complete that um, questionnaire. And I will say, um, and I'm sure this is the same with all the institutions, make sure that you uh, put a correct email address that you will be checking on your application, uh, because that's how uh, we will be communicating with students. Um, and then finally, a benefit if students want to continue on with Franklin after high school graduation, we do offer a 20% discount um, on our undergraduate tuition for students to complete an associate or a bachelor's degree after high school uh, if they just successfully complete at least one CCP course through Franklin. And now I will go ahead and turn it over to Kenyon. And we don't have a slide in the deck. But let me just give you our uh, brief rundown. Kenyon College has been having partnerships with high schools for 44 years. Uh, we have qualified teachers in over 40 high schools, and five of those schools are in the greater Columbus area. The uh, Hilliard City Schools, all three high schools, uh, Beechcroft High School, and New Albany High School. So if you are looking for Kenyan classes and you are in those high schools, contact your high school guidance counselor and they will get you started. We do have online application and uh, uh, we follow all the state prescribed uh, procedures for admitting students and we hope to see you. And now uh, I think we're going to Ohio State. Thanks, sorry about that Dudley. I'll fix that one. Um, so again, for Ohio State, uh, we provide CCP classes only on our campus or online. We do not have them available in the high schools. And we do offer a pretty wide range of courses that students can take. A lot of times students might start 
taking classes for our general education requirements. They might start taking some introductory courses for their uh, future major. And we also have other special programs. One that we like to highlight is our John Glenn High School Internship Program that uh, combines both an academic course and an internship experience for high school seniors who are interested in going into the field of public policy. We do provide CCP on all of our campuses, so both the Columbus campus and our regional campuses in Lima, Marion, Mansfield, Newark, and the Agricultural Technical Institute in Worcester. Admission to the program depends on the campus that you're interested in attending. And most people are in Central Ohio thinking about doing the Columbus campus. As you may realize, admission to Ohio State Columbus campus is highly selective for freshman students. It is also highly selective for College Credit Plus students. That means that we are looking at the high school courses that a student has already completed. Typically, our students have completed three years of English, math, science, social science, and foreign language. We are also looking at their academic performance, and we usually see students who are ranking in the top 10% or so of their high school class or have a GPA that is within that range. But we do also look at a variety of other factors. We look at leadership, we look at overall involvement, we look at um, things like if a student has worked. So it's a very similar process to a student who is applying to Ohio State after high school graduation. Our regional campuses will use the state eligibility criteria, so either a standardized test score or that 3.0 high school GPA. And we also still would like to see two years of high school English and math. Our application deadlines are very strict. We look for students that would like to start in the, the summer term, which starts actually in May for Ohio State. Those students need to apply by February 1st. If you're interested in getting started next fall, you would need to submit the application by May 1st. And for the spring, which starts in January, the deadline will be October 15th. We uh, encourage you to visit our website, which is, um, sorry, I'm losing track here. Um, can't see the bottom of my screen, but that's um, academy-ccp.osu.edu. And again, we'll be more than happy to answer questions. I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Kelly, who is answering questions in the chat. And I will go ahead and turn things over to Otterbein. Oh, and there's the Kenyon College slide. <laughs> There we are. Hi again, I'm Lori again from Otterbein. Um, and I'm gonna echo a lot of what's already been said tonight. Um, at, at Otterbein, we offer kind of a, a unique experience for a small liberal arts private college here in Westerville. So very centrally located to a lot of people who are looking at taking classes in Central Ohio. Um, I would say it's, um, a special opportunity for students who really kind of want to get their feet wet with an on-campus experience. Otterbein's courses are offered here on campus in Westerville, um, with the exception of one course that we offer online, which is an introduction to education course for any aspiring teachers out there who want to get an early start um, that way. Um, but also our application process is pretty cut and dry. You'll find more information on our website if you wanted to check that out later. But basically, it's an electronic application on the Otterbein website. You complete the, the application. You request your transcripts from your high school counselor. And then there are also two forms that are um, fillable PDFs there with the application. One is a high school information form, which will be completed by your school. And the other is that mature content permission slip that you'll also um, complete, have a parent sign or guardian and submit that with your application. Um, we'll review your application. You would get your admission decision 
along with a packet of information if you're going to go ahead and um, be accepted at Otterbein for CCP. And then after that, you would get information about attending mandatory advising and orientation. Um, and you can see there also at the bottom of the screen, we've got deadlines as well. On June 1st, if you're looking at attending Otterbein for um, CCP credit next fall, and then um, if you're looking at attending for the spring, it would be November 15th. So again, we've got um, a lot of information on our website at otterbein.edu. And you're always welcome to give me a call. Um, you can contact the admissions office here for undergraduate admission, and they will put you straight through to me here with any CCP questions that you might have. Um, and I will go ahead and turn it back over to Michelle and our student panel. Great. We know that there are a lot of questions that come up and we think that the best people to answer some of the general questions are students who've actually participated in CCP. So I'm going to ask our student panelists to all um, unmute themselves and to put on their cameras so people can see your nice smiling faces. And uh, we'll get started with some quick introductions. And let's see, I want to make sure I can see everybody. So um, I'm going to start with Ash. Do you, would you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, your name, your school, uh, what grade you're in, and then we'll go from there. Um, OK. Hello, everyone. I am Ash. I go to Columbus Alternative High School, and I am a senior. Thank you. Skylar. Hi, everyone. My name is Skylar, and I go to West High School, and I am a junior. Uh, all right, Jordan. Hi, um, I'm Jordan. I go to Columbus Alternative, and I'm also a junior. Thank you. Ricardo? Uh, hey, guys. Uh, my name is Ricardo. I go to New Albany High School, and I'm a senior. And Ari? Hi, I'm Ari. I go to Beechcroft High School, and I'm a senior. Great. Thank you, everybody, for sharing your experiences. And so I'm going to ask you all to tell us, when did you start taking CCP classes? And where did you start taking? And have you continued to take CCP classes? So Ash, you can start. OK, uh, I guess I'll start. Um, I started taking CCP classes my junior year. I started at Columbus State as a part-time college credit plus student. And this year I transitioned to the Ohio State University as a full-time college credit plus student. Great. Ricardo, why don't you tell us about your experiences? Um, I started at the end of my sophomore year in the uh, summer 2021 at Sea State and I've continued to uh, be at Sea State. Um, and I will be starting to take CCP classes, uh, OSU next semester. Great. Jordan. Um, I just started taking CCP classes this year. Um, I plan to take Ohio State classes um, next year. Great. Skylar. I started at the end of my sophomore year taking one class. And I'm currently taking three classes. And then Ari. I just started taking CCP classes this year with Kenya College. Wonderful. So um, I'm probably not going to have all of you answer all of these questions. So if there's one that you really want to answer, just kind of give me a, a, a hands up or something. So my first question is, what How'd you find out about CCP and what made you decide that you wanted to participate in CCP? Who wants to start that one? Go ahead, Ash. I saw you first. Okay, I guess, okay. I, I'll start train again. Um, 
So um, I'm going to talk about the program that I'm doing specifically because I am in a special program. I believe it's only for Columbus City Schools, though. Um, so last year, I started with the Junior Jumpstart program, which is where juniors take half a day of Columbus State classes and half a day of just regular high school classes. And I found that really well. And my, my kind of thing, like for joining that, well, number one, my mom. And number two, just kind of dip my toes into college, kind of figure out, is this really what I want to do? Or just avoid college altogether? Ricardo. Yep. So um, I learned of CCP through my brother, who um, actually, he had a friend whose sister started taking uh, CCP classes. And when she graduated from high school, she was she already had an associate's degree, I believe, from OSU or Columbus State. So my the reason I wanted to start taking classes was just so that I could uh, hopefully graduate early uh, once I start my uh, college. Great, thank you. So. What was the process of getting started like for you? And I'm going to call on Jordan to start that conversation. Um, my process, uh, I wanted to start taking CCP classes when I was in seventh grade. Um, my counselor wasn't the best, so it was kind of a struggle. And then COVID happened and it was just, it wasn't in the cards for me. Um, and then I got into, uh, Ash was talking about Junior Jumpstart. That's the program I'm in right now. Um, and it was pretty simple, um, especially with them list, like guiding me through the way the entire time. Great. Skylar, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, I'm also in the Junior Jumpstart program, but I am also in the Upward Bound program at Columbus State, which um, is a tutoring program. It helps me with the internship hours I need to graduate, but it also allowed me to take my first class over summer, which was actually an intro to site class that was worth three credits. So that um, was automatically an adjustment because it wasn't like a class I had taken before. It was a lot of reading and it was a lot of um, theories actually rather than facts that you would learn in traditional schools. Cool. So Ari, since you're our Kenyan student, how was it um, getting started taking those classes? So at first I, I was nervous about it. Like I was scared to take college classes. But so starting the program, we started over the summertime with our teacher. So I felt like that made it easier to fit in when we actually started the school year because I already had experience with stuff and I had already met my classmates and my teachers. So it made me more comfortable in the classroom environment. And so I basically had a head start with my class too because we did some of the work over the summertime and it was just easy. Good. So it turned out to be a better experience than you were a little nervous about. So that's yeah. awesome. Great. So um, what's been surprising or unexpected that some of you have run into with your CCP classes? Anybody have uh, something they'd like to share with that one? Go ahead, Skylar. Okay, for me, um, with high school, you learn a lot of the material in class rather than um, doing it on your own. And for uh, college, you will learn material in the class, but you'll have much more work outside of class to do in your free time. And it's, uh, it's big grades, it's like projects and chapter work. And it's very important to know that there's that uh, difference. Great, thank you for sharing that. Anybody else have something they'd like to share that's been unexpected? Go ahead, Ricardo. Um, so what I've found unexpected, at least for me through my um, CCP classes, has been that they've been surprisingly easier than high school classes. Um, at least for me, they have, um, especially like 
the English classes, which is not my best subject or hasn't been my best subject, but I've been able to get um, good grades in them. And the, and the colleges also have a lot more resources for like writing essays and stuff like that. So it also helps with that. Good. Okay, Ash, I see your hand. I'm gonna kind of bounce off of Ricardo because for me too, I found like, it, especially at like Columbus State, um, I found that the classes are much easier. But then again, I go to Columbus Alternative High School, which is like one of the like hardest high schools ever. But yeah, like the English class, they're awesome. Plus, I know both campuses that I that I have been to. They have writing centers where you can actually like submit your work and have someone just proofread it. And it's been a lifesaver. It was a lifesaver for me last year. Honestly, I don't know what I'd do without it. Great, thank you. So, who's taken both online and in person classes? Ricardo. Yeah. Okay. So can you talk a little bit about maybe what you saw, the differences and the benefits of doing online and doing in-person? Uh, so it, it kind of depends on the class. Um, for like the harder classes like math and science, which have been the ones that I've taken in-person, um, you, you can participate in them, but it's mostly uh, the professor leading the class and then you just do studying on your own. Um, for the other classes like English and social studies, uh, since I took them online, they were also more um, web-based. So it was less uh, hands-on from the professor and more on you. And you just really had to work on your pace, on your own pace for that. Um, but other than that, it hasn't been too difficult. Great, thank you. Um... So this is also kind of similar, but can you talk about what you have found that's been different between your high school classes and your college classes now that you've been taking a few? And Jordan, we haven't heard from you lately. Um, for me personally, um, it wasn't that much different. Um, like the uh, Ricardo and Ash were saying, it, it seemed like easier for me. Mainly, I didn't know if it was because like I'm really smart or because of the school that I'm coming from, uh, which is Columbus Alternative as well. Um, and there was this one time where I got like a 76 on a paper and I didn't understand what was wrong. And I had to like go to the teacher and all that stuff. and. It was, it was like an eye opener to me that like maybe I need to start thinking of different ways on different things, um, but yeah. Great, thank you. So I do wanna ask, tell folks that if you have a question that you'd like to hear directly from one of the students, feel free to put that in the question and answer and I can ask those questions um, to our panelists. Again, the students are living this every day. They know what this is really like, um, and they can definitely give you the true unvarnished story. Uh, we haven't told them <laughs> that they can only say certain things. So if there's something that you would like to know, please go ahead and put it into our question and answer uh, panel at the bottom. And while we're waiting to see if any questions do come in, let me ask one more question and I'm gonna ask all of you and Ari, I'm gonna have you start. What advice do you have for a student who's thinking about doing CCP? Um, advice that I have for students that wanna do CCP is basically to do it because when I made the like, I, as I said before, I was nervous at first, but after I made that choice, I saw like there's like between high school courses and college courses. I mean, yeah, the two are different, but like they're not going to give you a class that they don't think that you're prepared for. So like even if you're nervous, you can go into it. Just don't procrastinate. Nothing like that. Just do your work on time, get it done, and it will be easy. It'll be simple. Thank you. 
Skylar, what advice do you have? Um, I would say plan out your time. Even if it's waking up in the day and planning out how your day will go, if it's planning how the week will go, always set aside a time to study and to do your work. Just to build on um, what was said earlier, you can't just procrastinate because it's going to come and get you at some point. You've got to get it done and you've got to make sure that you're doing it right also. So, you know, having that time set aside, that is really good. It's good to be organized and have that time management. Jordan. Yeah, they, they both really hit everything that <laughs> I was thinking about. Um, but as like a victim of procrastination, doing everything at midnight, 2 a.m., because the stuff was due at 8 a.m., don't do that. <laughs> really plan out your time. Um, it's honestly, it's honestly going to be the best, best thing for you. Um, don't be scared of a college class. Uh, more than likely, it's going to be less harder than you expect it. You expect it to have this overwhelmingly, like overwhelming weight on you. It really, it really isn't going to have that much of a difference when you really think about it. Um, yeah. Okay, Ricardo, I'm going to ask you to actually answer a different question. Um, can you tell us um, anything that you wish you might have done differently or any regrets that you might have about your CCP enrollment? Um, really, just my biggest regret has been just not um, at, um, applying for CCP earlier on. Because if I had applied earlier on right now, I would probably be able to take more classes than what I have right now. Because uh, at the moment, I've uh, maxed out my credits for this year. So that has definitely been one of the regrets. But the other one has been... Um, how, how was the other one? Uh, not submitting the documents that I needed to apply to uh, CCP OSU. Because the first time when I applied uh, for CCP, I just forgot to turn in some... Uh, some of the documents. So maybe that was the reason why I didn't get accepted to OSU CCP the first time. So then I had to go to uh, C State, but it, it's been a great experience either way. Good. Thanks for uh, helping emphasize my point of meeting the deadlines. Um, Ash, any, any regrets, anything that you wish you would have done differently? Um. How many do I have, or how many am I limited to? <laughs> One or two. One or two, okay. Um, honestly, I think my biggest, like, what I wish I had done differently was honestly just changing, like, when I have certain classes. <laughs> That's, like, the only thing. Because the one thing I love about my special program is I have, like, some guidance. <laughs> but also... Why did I choose to do math at eight in the morning? <laughs> Understood. Thank you. We have a question from the audience. Um, how did you choose the college you're attending and what did you base your de decision on? So anybody who was uh, thinking about that one want to throw, go ahead and unmute. That's fine. Go ahead, Ash. Um, should I do both schools? Because I went from CSCC to OSU, which I think also answers one question that sure. I saw in the Q&A. Sure. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. So for Columbus State, I mean, with the program I was in, I was kind of restricted to Columbus State. But also Columbus State, a smaller campus, uh, feels like more intimate, I would say. Like you get more one-on-one -on -one attention. And I thought that was really good for like starting out with college and giving it a try. But for the second program I'm in, which uh, is called Seniors to Sophomores, which is like pretty much the jump. Uh, so I, I had four options. I had Capital, uh, I think Otterbein, OSU and Columbus State. And I chose OSU because 
uh, that is the school I hope to attend after graduation. I'm still waiting for my decision. <laughs> uh, but I was like, well, might as well see if I like it here. Thank you. Um, so another question for our folks, what has your favorite class been? Go ahead, Skylar. I'd say out of college success, American history, English 1100, and intro to psych, it was definitely intro to psych, as I do want to go into psychology when I'm older. It was a fun class. It was a lot of reading, but it was very interesting. Jordan, I couldn't see. Did you have your hand up? Oh, you did it. Okay, go ahead, Ricardo. Um, so right now I've had like three uh, favorite classes. The first one was uh, Political Science 1100, which which covers my um, American government uh, credit at that, at my high school. Um, the other one was um, English. 1100 just because it wasn't my best subject in school and I got an A on it. And the last one has been just um, math 1151 because it, it was pretty easy, I would consider it. Uh, maybe even easier than pre-calc, which is kind of rare, but it was fun. Good, Ash, go ahead. So uh, I have one that's a favorite from Columbus State and then two that are favorites at Ohio State. So my favorite from Columbus State was also political science 1101 or 1100. I freaking loved my professor. She was an angel and it also fulfilled my US government uh, requirements. So another plus. And for Ohio State, these are very different classes. So my Two of my favorites for, uh, or my two favorites for Ohio State are my astronomy 1101 class, which is basically like intro to everything in astronomy. And it's really interesting, especially since I love astronomy. But then also my Korean class. I really love like learning languages and I want to do a career in South Korea. So I figured I might as well take Korean class. So we also have another question about what grade do you think would have been a good time to start? Do you feel like it was uh, good that you started early? Do you think it, it would have been better to start later? What, what are your thoughts? And again, who wants to start with that one? Go ahead, Ari. Ari. Um, so as a senior, and this is my first year taking um, CCP classes. So I would say like, I feel like the best grade to start is at sophomore year, because like sometimes, sometimes coming in like as freshmen, you don't take like classes seriously. So I don't think that would be a good grade to start. But sophomore year, I wish I would have started my sophomore year, but we don't have, have like that many programs at my school. So, but I feel like that's the perfect grade to start. Anybody else have a different opinion? Go ahead, Ash. Again, this is more, mostly based on my personal experience, but I felt junior year was actually like a really good time to start because that way I had some high school. Well, some high school because COVID hit my freshman year. Uh, but I feel like junior year was a great year to start because I had the high school. I was like, let's try something on the next level. Very good. All right, so I think that I've answered the, asked the majority of questions that I see in the question and answer. So I'm gonna say thank you so much to our panelists. Um, we really appreciate your spending some time and sharing your experiences. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you. You can feel free to go ahead and turn your cameras off. And we do have um, time if there are any additional questions that you would like to send towards anybody from any of the different colleges, if you'd like us to answer anything live, um, 
and I will have the question and answers um, open to see so I can uh, let's see if I can get that to open. We also do have a poll that we just launched that we would love if you would complete that. It will just take you a quick minute. Um, so if you will do that while we're finishing up questions, we would really appreciate that. And I think that's preventing me from looking at questions and answers. Uh, it's not letting me open that. I'm not sure why. Right now, Michelle, we don't have any questions um, in the question and answer. So if anyone has additional questions, remember you can do that by accessing the Q&A bubble at the bottom of your screen where you have your control panel. And I will turn things over to you, Christine, to finish things off. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. If you have additional questions, um, please feel free to put those in there. Um, one question that we have here is who to contact if there are further questions. I would suggest reaching out to your high school counselor. They can definitely answer questions about College Credit Plus and get you connected to the correct person. Um, also, you can reach out to any of the representatives that have shared today. Um, so that's another avenue that you can go. Um, we do have some questions that are coming in about middle school. So would any of our higher ed representatives want to talk about what if you're in middle school and how successful have eighth grade students been? I will jump in from the Ohio State perspective and say, at, um, at the state level, the vast majority of students who participate are high school juniors and seniors. There are some seventh and eighth graders who have participated. And it's important that the students be really ready for the rigor of those college level courses. Um, it is, they are eligible to apply and to, to participate. Um, the, they're not likely to be admitted at Ohio State because of our admission criteria, um, but we definitely have seen students who have started fairly early, so it's not as common. I'm going to turn it over to Dudley. And I would just like to add that um, while the program is open to 7th, 8th, and ninth grade students, many of the courses uh, that you take uh, do have implied knowledge from previous high school classes. So it's difficult. There, there are a limited number of classes that are really realistic for uh, seventh and eighth graders to take, maybe even ninth graders, just because of the, the sort of uh, progression that these courses go through. Okay, and we do have a question that's specific to junior jump starts. Um, stating that if their student is in junior jumpstart and wants to take CC classes next year, do they need to submit another letter of intent? And does he need to apply again? So I don't know if any of our higher ed partners can answer that question. Um, if not, I would suggest contacting your high school counselor to talk about that. I believe that students do need to submit the letter of intent every year. And if they want us to do a different college for CCP, they would need to apply to that different college. But obviously, um, they can continue to work with their advisor at Columbus State if they're already in junior jumpstart. So I'll jump in real quickly. The letter of intent is to let the high school know uh, that a student may but not guaranteed to take uh, college classes through the CCP program. And the reason for this letter of intent is mainly so that the high school knows what their financial obligations uh, may be and that they can properly counsel the student in this. So it's important to do that letter every year. But uh, uh, unlike many traditional college programs, it is possible for you to take courses in at multiple colleges. Just saying that again, that was in the presentation. Great. And one question that came in is, what is the benefit of CCP versus AP courses? 
They're both very strong, very rigorous opportunities for students to challenge themselves. Um, AP courses are high school courses. And when a student takes the um, AP exam, they have the ability to earn credit. Um, but it's, the credit will depend on the score that they earn and whether or not the college they go to eventually awards credit. Um, in the state of Ohio, students will get credit for scores of a three, four, or five. Out of state, it's more likely to get credit at a four or maybe even just a five. When a student takes college credit plus and completes the course successfully, they have earned college credit and they have a college transcript that shows that they have earned that credit. So they're both great opportunities for students. They're different. An AP course is likely to be a year long instead of a half year. Um, a student might be able to do more courses. Uh, we've had students who, if they took, for example, AP math, took one AP math their entire year, but if they did CCP, they might have gotten calculus one in the fall and calculus two in the spring. So th they both have advantages. They both look very good if you're thinking about it for college admissions. It shows that a student is challenging themselves. So it's more about what meets the student's needs. Um, there's not an immediate bias that one is a million times better than the other. They're both really good. Great, thank you. And it looks like there are no more questions um, that are coming in. So... Ash has her hand up for answering something, I think. Okay. Ash, yeah, I was gonna, gonna yeah, I was gonna chime in on that CCP versus AP as like from a student perspective. Great. So honestly, um, I feel like, um, so kind of like what, Miss Brown said, like the APs, you're not guaranteed to get the credit. So you really have to put like a lot of effort into the class. I mean, I'm not saying you have to do, you don't have to do that with college classes, but I'm just saying like it's really dependent on your test scores. But for the like, college credit plus classes, you're guaranteed credit no matter what. So that's just my two cents. Thank you, Ash, for pointing that out. I didn't have to say it this time. Great, thank you. So I think at this point, um, there is a question from Lisa about, is it best to work with a high school guidance counselor for CCP initial entrance as well as changing colleges? Definitely, um, your high school counselor is the go-to person um, when you're thinking about CCP and also just thinking about what the process is at your school in order to take CCP courses. So it's really important for you to connect with your counselor. So that's a great question. Okay, well, I think those are all of the questions that have come in. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, there will be a recording that will be sent out of this presentation and sent to all of your counselors. Um, so if you need to go back and revisit this information, that will be available to you. So thank you again for joining. And we're really glad that you were able to come. And thank you for all of our panelists today, too, for taking the time to sharing, share this information. So have a fantastic evening, everyone.